I would like to tell you a story. It starts out with a mistake, turns ugly, has heroes, and ends happily with powering America within a solar energy budget. The mistake is one we both love and hate, interstates. By allowing the federal government to exceed its constitutional limitation to only build postal roads, the technology of free speech of that time, American cities sprawled, so that today, in order to be economically competitive, American families must own one or more cars, buy oil, and travel on congested, accident-prone, polluted highways. The intent of the Constitution, as explained in Federalists 9, 10, and 45, is that the diverse economies of the various states was to be the defender of liberty and the primary defense against tyranny of the majority. Federal standards that made all states colonies of car companies and oil companies undermined that fundamental defense of liberty. Then we undermined the liberty of our posterity by socializing the cost of pollution, tilting the balance of nature. With incredible lack of foresight, interstates were powered with oil, a finite resource. U.S. domestic oil production peaked the light blue line in 1970. Since then, the dark blue line, oil imports, and national debt have increased in tandem. So now, today, Americans face oil famine, the monolithic dependence on a single source of energy, 50% outside of our control. Eight presidents have declared imported oil a threat to national security. In 2010, the Joint Forces Command published a document warning all U.S. military commands to expect the world to be 10 million barrels a day short by 2015 with resource wars and depressions. If we count it honestly, we have been at war defending our addiction to oil since 1990. My name is Bill James. With a group of West Point classmates that studied nuclear engineering together, we've pulled together a team with the mission of displacing 70% of oil-powered urban transportation by 2020. And that brings us to the heroes of this story, ordinary Americans acting in their own self-interest when given liberty to choose can make a dramatic shift in infrastructure. After a century of government centrally planned rotary dial telephones, when liberty to choose communications networks was restored to the people, they chose long dormant technologies of the internet and radio telephones. Similarly, in the four-year period between 1865 and 1869, private enterprise funded the construction of the transcontinental railroads, cutting the cost of a ticket from New York to San Francisco from $1,000 to $67. Freight rail averages 480 ton miles per gallon by eliminating the repetitive start stops. J pods are ultra light vehicles, so we take out the parasitic mass, we take out the repetitive start stops, and now we can move people, cargo, and trash in a city using a tenth the energy of cars, trains, and buses. The change from 56 cents a mile to operate a car to 6 cents a mile to operate a J pod the saving of $600 billion a year in imported oil pays for the $5 trillion in networks every 8 to 20 years. Like the building of railroads and the Internet, impossibly large infrastructure projects can convert costs into profits. By deploying solar collectors over the top of the rails, we gather 5 to 30,000 vehicle miles of power per mile of rail per day. So we can power urban transportation within a solar energy budget and make the networks durable against a single point of failure of a blackout. We also have a version of this thing called rescue rail that can be thrown up at the rate that the transcontinental railroads were built of about 3 to 10 miles per day per crew to deploy out for special events or to mitigate the consequences and reduce the energy required to recover from disasters. Our team has considerable experience in leadership, manufacturing, technology, logistics, and operations. As examples, I founded ASI Datamite, 
which does statistical process controls for controlling manufacturing operations. I wrote the software that Twin City Business Monthly listed as the best new high-tech product of the year for the region. In 1998, Wiley published a book called Desktop Hosting about this approach to software. We have built robots and a small demonstration unit that we've put thousands of people through, and they get out of it and they go, we're going to be the Jetsons, because you get in it, you touch home, mall, school, or work, it goes up and down the rail and stops at an appropriate location. We've put together the mechanical drawings for the overhead truss assemblies and looked at the footings and the other aspects that we have to do for the civil engineering. Our team has built the power system for the infrastructure. Here is an example at Plantronics headquarters, the Bluetooth earpiece company in Santa Cruz, California, designed by Ron Swenson. We've also designed a chemical storage system. Nature's low work solution for storing and distributing solar energy is not electricity, but chemistry, food, wood, coal, oil, natural gas. We believe this approach to power will create the distributed grid industry. The barrier to powering America within a solar energy budget is the same reason we had a century of rotary telephones and lost tens of thousands of miles of railroad since the 1973 oil embargo. It is government central planning. We have asked government to grant rights of way based upon exceeding five times CAFE standards existing safety records of modes of transportation in a framework and privately funded, privately operated, and paying 5% of gross revenues to the aggregate rights-of-way holders. The city of Fayetteville, Georgia, just south of Atlanta's airport, is the first city in America to grant a resolution for transportation innovation. It will become a Kitty Hawk event, a short network that changes a paradigm. We've also made a significant effort to work with Governor Christie's staff in New Jersey. Here's an example of the Meadowlands. So connecting the IZOD and American Dream over to Giant Stadium and what I personally would like to do is jump across the Hudson River to Manhattan before the 2014 uh, Super Bowl. So green is in 10 minutes, yellow is in 20, and red is in 30. So the trip from Giant Stadium to Manhattan would be about 12 minutes. JPOD's approach to deploying networks is solve someone's problems. Don't solve the world's problem, but solve someone. Here is an example of LAX connecting the terminal to car rental to the green line to freight forwarders to the airport hotels, networking an economic community so that that community can operate more efficiently. Then we combine communities to communities and the value of networks explodes. JPODS has a signed agreement to build in China, but we need to build in our native language first, and then we can open the world market. The size of the U.S. market is about 500,000 miles, about four times the amount of freight rail, which will be the logistical arteries, and JPODS will be the logistical capillaries, or about one quarter the number of lane miles of urban roads. In the crisis of the 1973 oil embargo, the federal government, with study PB-244854 by the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment, with letters from the U.S. Senate, identified the critical need for personal rapid transit. But like the Internet, which was created in 1969, commercialization of the Internet and PRT require the interaction between innovators and customers in a free market. One PRT network was built in Morgantown, West Virginia and has delivered 110 million oil-free, injury-free passenger miles. Booz Allen Hamilton did a study for the state of New Jersey's in, 19, in 2007 and laid out that they expected the PRT market to already be exploding in its growth. Similar to the computer industry in the 1980s, there will be competition between the large traditional uh, transportation providers, PRT companies that are building at Heathrow and Mazdar, and companies like Kiva Systems 
that builds warehouse systems today. JPOD's competitive advantage is our patent on the use of distributed collaborative computer networks to move physical packets, the physical internet. What is needed is a Kitty Hawk event, a small network that drives a paradigm shift. A $6 million network in Fayetteville, Georgia will unleash about $8 billion in private activity bonds at the federal government and establish the commercial bond market. JPODs will sell each LMC a 300 meter starter network, so we have a very standard product and a very standard way of ramping up LMCs. JPODs will then remain a minority shareholder in each LMC. With each LMC being highly locally owned, it will stay focused on the needs of the customers in that specific market niche. As the LMCs develop operational skills, JPODs will build networks and then sell them for about 10 to $12 million per mile each week. This contained iterative process will be repeated over and over again in thousands of LMCs across the U.S. and the world. The book Nothing Like It in the World, How the Transcontinental Railroads Were Built at About 3 to 10 Miles Per Day Per Crew is a great historical example of what we are going to achieve. And that brings us to our happy conclusion, where after a century of central planning of government control of the means of production in power and transportation, free markets will be restored to power and transportation, and ordinary people acting in our own self-interest will power America within a solar energy budget by 2020.